Well, for more on what's happening on the markets, let's bring in Martin Peltier, Senior Portfolio Manager for Trivest Wealth at Wellington Altus Private Council. Martin, thanks so much for making time for us today. You betcha. So August has been a, a fairly negative month for stock markets. Are you expecting that negativity to continue? Yeah, we're getting in a period of seasonal weakness and you have certain segments of the market that has done phenomenally well, especially the megas. And so um, there could be some profit taking there and maybe a rotation to, into some of the other areas that have not done so well, um, especially if we get some better indication about the strength of the overall economy and the outlook for interest rates by the by the Fed. Yeah, there has been so much focus on, on tech so far this year, hasn't there? And even just uh, last week with NVIDIA reporting, but a really interesting reaction to NVIDIA's results. Uh, the results you know, blew away as expectations. And yet by the end of the following trading day, the stock was flat. Do you think that, you know, that the tech run, I mean, using NVIDIA just as sort of the, the leader in the, you know, example of the group there, um, do you think the tech run has, has had its day at this point? Well, that's a very dangerous call to make. Of course. <laughs> uh, there, there's there's just a lot of uh, euphoria in that segment of the market, and it's positioned to be more of a defensive one, um, ironically. And and so you know, is there? Um, and I, I think I think the basic it comes down to selling rumor, or sorry, buying rumor and selling fact. And so um, the market did a really good job pricing in those results, and uh, and, and then it, it took some profit when the results came out. The big question, the way I'm looking at it is, how certain are, can we be about the forward growth? Um, you can invest in the market uh, via income and, and, and earnings and, and having that paid out in the form of a dividend or share buybacks or uh, and growth. And the multiples being paid for growth in a high rate environment is a mismatch. And so you had uh, you have the mega cap and and, and, and a market cap weighted uh, S and P that's up from eco weighted index by 11 percent, and and so there's a big gap between the two. And so the big question is is can that growth be delivered upon, and how big of a multiple are you willing to pay for it? What about the uh, Canadian banks? We were just taking a look at a couple of them heading into more earnings results coming this week, but we did get Royal and TD last week. From what we learned from them, what would you be looking out for from the others? Well, I, I think the trend that certainly that we're going to be watching for is more job layoffs, especially in capital markets. We've seen some some layoffs already uh, by by what uh, they've been announced, BMO, for example, and Laurentian Bank, and is that and, and RBC uh, announced that they're going to be doing some more layoffs. And so, um, are they going to be able to protect their margins? Probably. They have to you know make sure they tread carefully in order for the two to you know four week uh, layoff notices. Um, but the the bottom line is is I think they're they're going to try and protect their margins. And I don't think there's a lot of growth, even though they sold off this year, um, you know, maybe they get back to even, but there isn't, it isn't a huge growth segment. However, they are paying some nice dividends. And uh, when you throw an option strategy on top of that, you can get some, some nice premium. And so, you know, depending on what you're looking for, you could get uh, some, some good equity income from that segment of the market. I mentioned that we'll, we'll have a lot of data to watch out for this week that uh, central bankers will be watching for as well. Uh, when you're thinking about what the Bank of Canada might do from here, what the Fed might do a, a, as well in terms of interest rate um, you know, trajectory, uh, how is that shaping what you're doing investment wise? Well, I don't want to be speculating on future direction of interest rates. Um, unless I want to be protecting myself from from uh, uh, an event like what we've witnessed last year with a rapid rise, uh, given the sensitivity. If I speculate on on interest rates, then you know on a big drop, then why wouldn't you be buying bonds, for example? Because if you look at um, since the, uh, the the market bottom and uh, uh, since in March, sorry, March of, of 2020 COVID situation, uh, U.S. stocks have more than doubled the performance of bonds. And so stocks uh, on the equity duration side are saying that rates are coming down quite rapidly next year and bonds are taking a more cautious approach. So if you are going to make that positioning around interest rates and bonds look to be a better buy, 
I just want to be careful about that because I think that we could see a potential for a resurgence of inflation again, not to the same levels, to the same extent of what we saw a couple months ago. But, you know, if you see uh, inflation start to go up again due to a base effect, um, and, and that could spook the equity market side of things, and it could spook the long end of the of the curve on treasuries. So we just want to keep our short our duration short. Unfortunately, you know we're getting you know you're getting five percent payments on cash, uh, dividends plus a little bit of call option uh, premium. You know I can get a, a double my money in, in seven years on on those kinds of, of rates. That's good enough for me. I don't want to be uh, making a big bet on on mm. and, and being wrong and costing my, my clients money. We don't have a ton, a ton of time left, uh, Martin, but I want to go through a couple of your investment ideas right now, a couple of ETFs that you've got your eye on. Um, BMO Covered Calls Utilities ETF is one of them. What is it that you like about this and uh, about utilities right now? Well, again, um, I, I really I watch a really good podcast with Buffett speaking at uh, um, Georgia University of Georgia, and he said a bird in hand is worth two in the bush. And when am I going to get my my two in the bush? And if I can get a ten percent yield uh, with a little downside, um, with uh, the, the dividends and interest rates maybe falling, which will benefit utilities, and then get a call premium on that. Um, then I get my two birds in the bush rather quickly, like I said, in seven years. So the premium is looking quite enticing at 10%. And so, again, I'm getting that cash flow paid right now um, in an uncertain market. So that's why I like the utility sector, especially with it selling off this year. And we were just talking about the banks, uh, but you, you like Horizon's equal weight Canadian bank covered call ETF. Um, so what, what do you like about this particular ETF? Again, if I think we're in a flat to range bone market, call writing makes a lot of sense. So you can harvest some of the uh, the premium from the excess volatility and people's concerns about the banking sector. And again, get more cash flow. I'm not playing for the huge growth and recovery in that space, but if I get my dividend, get a little bit of call premium on top of that and get 9%, uh, again, my investors, my clients will be very happy about that. And we're also doing structured notes in that segment of the market that, you know, we're getting anywhere from 10 to 15 percent because the ball is so high. So, again, getting that front end cash flow is is fantastic. We just haven't been able to see that when rates were down at 1 percent. And you've also got a, a pick just quickly, Martin, in uh, the energy space as well in ETF. Yeah. So uh, the energy space is trading six times earnings. Think about that for a second, six times. And so the market isn't believing that the earnings are sustainable. And uh, let's just say that if oil prices stay at $80 and they, and they stay that level for the next six months, the cash flow I'm going to be able to get from that segment of the market is tremendous at six times versus a growth uh, story that 35 times that I don't know if that growth is going to be able to materialize. So six times. And then uh, and, uh, there's a cover call you can do on the energy space is to add some uh, protection uh, to add some more income. You get up to 14, 15 percent yield. Um, you know, I think that's appropriate given the level of risk in the, sec in the, in the sector. And so we stay flat. And, uh, and if we can you know, harvest that kind of a premium yeah. as a smaller percentage of the portfolio, we're quite happy about it.